what's up everybody this is Maxine and um, today I'm going to show you guys how to tackle shadows in Photoshop that is how to paint shadows and highlights in Photoshop so uh, before I really go into that I'll be taking you just through all the process of which I go through whenever I paint because <clears throat> in the last video I upload I break down the steps where I first of all make the line art in, in Illustrator and I paint in Photoshop. Well, this is a combination of everything, but I won't really be going into details based on the lines <coughs> and the whole painting. I will only just be taking you guys through on how to deal with the shadows, applying the shadows, and blending of the shadows. That is just where I will be taking you guys through. In this video but you will be seeing all the whole process of which i will go through but everything is really going to be a speed video just to balance what you've watched in the previous video so here i have opened up illustrator and um, my document size is um 2480 by 3508 which i'll be working on and then i have um a picture that i've already downloaded i will leave a link to the picture in the description that I'll be making use of in this video so I'm going to import the picture into Illustrator and um, I'm just going to hold on shift and resize it just like so I think because all I'm targeting in this part of this image is just the head just the head is what I want to work with here so I'm just going to resize that to just um, something like this should be enough for me okay i'm gonna so what i'm going to do i'll go up here and i'll reduce the opacity so that i can see it when i trace or when i make my lines then i will go over to my layer part and i'm going to lock down this layer so that when i am painting i don't move these layers or when i'm drawing i don't move this layer or so on or something like that and then I'm going to create a new layer above which it's going to be having my line art. You can rename that if you like, but I don't want to rename that. You can just name that to line art or so on. So now once I'm done with all these, the next thing I always do, I go to uh, my brush, which is right here. Click on this little arrow right here and then hit on new brush and set it to calligraphy brush. Click OK and come down and set it to pen pressure and I set the size to 3 and the variation to 3 and I hit on OK but I've already created the brush so I won't be creating the brush anymore and just gonna select the brush which you can see right here select the brush and when you select the brush you grab your brush to when you grab your brush to when you go light on your digital tablet you get a light line and when you press hard you get a thicker line and when you go light again you get light line but if you're not making use of a digital tablet you can leave a comment down below then i'm going to show you how to create a a brush for the mouse when you are making use of um, a mouse so i'm just going to quickly go around this line and when i'm done i'll show you how to export into photoshop and start painting in photoshop
so now that I'm done with the lining, what I'm going to do next, um, okay, so now, turn off this eye layer, the blue layer, turn off the eye of the blue layer that contains the image. Now grab the move to and highlight everything. That is, if your artwork is not in the middle, that's when you do this process, but if your artwork is at the middle, you really don't need this process. And in other words, you can also rearrange the artwork in Photoshop. So now, if you are done arranging the artwork, what you are going to do, you go up to file, and when you go to file, go to export and go to export as. So when you go to export as, if you're on Mac, if you get this stuff just hold on and if your windows you know how to navigate through your windows explorers and so on so if you're on mac just click on this arrow and it's going to open up your finder for you in the way you'll be able to get many options so i have a place where i save all my artworks in my pc so what i'm going to do i'll just look at this place i put as artwork and I'm just going to save it here. So here I'm going to check, select the PNG from the drop down menu which is right here, PNG and I'm going to hit on use artboard so that if I check on this use artboard, it's going to use the size of the artboard to save the artwork for me. But if I just, if I uncheck the use artboard, it's just going to pick out the size that contains only the artwork which I do so I'll be making use of this used artboard because I want it to retain its size the same size I have as the document so I'm going to save it here and here I'm just going to for now I'm just going to rename this to shadows and highlight because that is what we are working on now shadows I'm just going to keep it that way and I'm going to hit on export and if you want to save it as pm jp jpeg or jpeg or whatever it's been called you click on the drop down menu you can save it here and if you want to save it on both you just have to repeat this same process and you'll be able to save it that way so right now i'm just going to hit on export and we're going to get this next png options so i always set this to 300 you can go on higher value and be sure that this can slow down your PC in some other ways. So I'm just going to keep it on 300 because when I'm working in Photoshop, my document size is going to be on 600 resolution. And here is going to be, this is 300 pixel per inch. So I'm just going to hit on, keep it on 300 pixel per inch. Background set it to transparent. You can put it to white or black, that is if you want, but I'm just going to leave it to transparent and I'm going to hit on OK. Now that is going to save, just give it some time, it might take some time, it might not take some time depending on your PC. So now that is done saving, for now if you want to save this, you can save this, but if you don't, you can just close that, so, but I'm still going to save that. So I'll go over to file and then save, and this time I'll just go back to the artworks, just go back to this part and document and I'm going to save it as shadows so that i can remember exactly what i i'm doing so i'm going to hit on save and this is just going to pop up just hit on ok <clears throat> so now we are done with this let's go over into photoshop All right um i've not even really opened up photoshop so let's go into it. all right inside of photoshop i already have this document created as you can see recovered i already created this and i just shut down my pc without um closing and so on okay so here now i'm going to be making use of my own brushes which i have been creating but i will not really make use of them so i just create them so i'm just going to test them before i can share it out to you guys to make use of and lastly i'm going to go up to windows and i'll go to swatches because i always have the colors i'll be making use of there i've already saved the swatches right here which i'll be making use of on my windows pc so i'll just go to import swatches 
right there and it's going to open up and i i'm just going to go into application adobe photoshop preset and then color swatches so i have them right here which is one two three going hold on command on my pc four and lastly which is five and i'm going to hit on open all right so now i have everything right here but you can see that i have another folder inside of them so i did that mistake when i was expecting all those sorry stuff so i'm just going to leave it like this for now and later on i can go back and adjust them so here i have the i can't keep the swatches panel right here so what i'm going to do i'm going to drag it down to dock it alongside with my brush so here i have my brushes I have the stroke the hard run brush the soft run brush and the soft run brush inverted so i'm just testing these brushes for now and now um, know, know that you can make use of the default run brushes available in photoshop to do all this stuff so now once we are done with all this stuff let's go over to file and let's go over to place embedded and then we can go over to where we have our artwork which is artworks shadows and hit on place all right now it has been placed in photoshop as you can see the way we export it in illustrator that's how we get it in photoshop so now click on this icon here and you're gonna get it's gonna place it so here we have everything the way it's supposed to be just the way we left it in illustrator so i have a little bit of an error right here which is this that doesn't really matter we can fix that right here in photoshop so now we're going to start off with the shadows so what i did right now i um i'm going to be placing this image on my second monitor and i'm going to paint from there but you can see the image on the screen as i paint so that it won't really really be difficult for you guys to figure out the places where the shadows are as i paint Okay, so for now we are going to focus on the face, but let me show you, before I start making use of two monitors, there is a technique I've been making use of since I've been making use of one monitor. So what I always do when I go over to, when I'm in Photoshop and ready to paint, I'm going, I always drag the reference image into Photoshop like, like that. When I drag it into Photoshop, what I go, what I always do, I go to Windows and I go to Arrange and I go to Two Up Horizontal or Two Up Vertical. I'm Korea Two Up Vertical, and I'm going to have the reference image at the left part, and I'm going to have the image I'm working on at the right part. So I guess I'm just going to leave it like this, just because of you guys, so that you can really, really tag along with what I'm doing. So right now let's before you start painting you need to break down the shadows before you start the shadows and highlight before you start painting so let's go over to the main image and um it's really going to be difficult picking the colors from here so i'm just going to use some colors from my swatches which i already have i think yeah something like this is a bit okay so i can just quickly try these stuff and see if it's really going to be okay for me and I'm um, having a little bit of okay I can just stick with this okay, let me see I think I'm having okay I thought I was having some kind of issue all right so let me check them I can just stick with all these colors and I'm going to make use of them then later on I can add up something to it to give me exactly what i want okay so i'm just going to delete this layer oh boy all right so i'm going to delete that layer now let's head over to this image so i'm going to create a new layer command shift plus n and i'm just going to hit on enter so right here i'm just going to go with a soft round brush I mean my stroke brush of course and I'm going to set the color back to black so now here we have um, 
if we are to break down these shadows the way i'm going to work on everything so here i'm going to say here we have something like the the mid tone that's what i'm going to call that and here we have this like the word i'm just going to like the shadows and here i'm just going to call that the highlights All right, forgive my spelling. So this is how I always do when I want to paint. I always try to figure out everything where they are and I know how to apply all those colors. So now that we have all these stuffs and how we can break them down, it's time for you to put them into practice in your own artwork. So we have the artwork right here. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to rename these to line art. Okay. now. I can lock that layer if I like. I'm just gonna keep it that way. Just lock it. Now create a new layer below, and here it's going to be. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to zoom in close to just to the skin. Then I'm going to grab my hard round brush in Photoshop. Then, so now applying the colors, this is what we have. Now we always have the word, as we say, we have the word, the shadows, the mid tones, and the highlight but normally it's almost like maybe four colors which you have the final highlight which you are going on to apply later on so what i always do when i want to apply i always apply the word the mid tune because the mid tune is where you are always going to apply before you start what applying the highlights uh, before you start applying the, the shadows and the highlight you really need to take note of that very well so if you have a color swatches like me and what you're going to do the darkest color it's going to be the second color you'll be making use of the darkest and the light color is going to be the second you're making use of so the mid tone the mid color it's going to be the one you'll be using um, i really think i'm really thinking of something let me check so i have my dark skin tone here because most times i make use of four colors when i'm painting so let me check this and this is all these are really really dark than what i expected and i really don't want to pick okay so let don't worry about that let's stick to this so i'm going to pick this that color there and now i'm going to start applying or most times if you want to speed up your applying what you're going to do go back to the line art layer that you have unlock that and hit w key on your keyboard or you can go over to this place and select the magic one too and when you select the magic one to just click in that part you want to apply the color and it's going to make a selection of everything but we have everything right here which is not really making any sense so what you're going to do now is just for you to grab the lasso to when you grab the lasso to hold on the shift key on your keyboard and add up to all this selection and because they are part of where you be painting so i'm just going to do everything just like including all this part just like that so i see here 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 now after you've done this the next thing you want to do you go up to select modify and then expand because if you don't do this there are some places that is going to be left over you're going to get some kind of spacing around your art works them so you can just hit on expand click on okay just expand it by one pixel then you're going to hit on the option key and the back space but before you do that make sure you are selecting the layer one which you just created so you hit on hold on hit hold on option and hit backspace then it's going to fill in the skin tone for you the mid color the mid tone which you just <coughs> selected but you can go in and do the blocking yourself with just the direct <coughs> with just the direct painting so now you can hit on command d and for windows users you always you should know that option is alternate command is control in on windows so you should just know that now that we're blocked in the mid tone it's time for us to start applying the shadow so what i always do most times i make use of the um hard round and soft round mixture with other stuffs to apply all these things so i'm just going to apply the what the dark 
colors which is the shadows so we, you can see the shadows we have here and yeah and you should know i'm not going to go through every process one after the other i'm really going to speed up all this process for this not really really go more than our expectations so i'm going to select that and select my hard round brush now create a new layer and then right click and set that layer to clipping mark so that when you paint you don't paint outside but there are other ways you can do that but for now i'm just going to stick with this method because this is more simpler than making use of the other method so i'm just going to start applying my shadows and i'm making use of the brush that has um a pressure of practicing the harder i press the thicker it's going to apply my shadows so i'm just going to start applying the shadows right now so as you can see it's, this is how it's really going to be so we have the And most times I always leave the ears out of this because I just have to go around and paint some other part first before I start coming back to paint the ears. And you should always try to play with the size of a brush whenever you are applying shadows like shadows and highlight because it's very very important.
Okay, so now when you are done applying the darkest color of everything, you can still go back and cross check to see if there are some places that you couldn't apply and then you go back and apply those stuffs and once you find out that yes you applied everything which you are supposed to apply it then now it's time for you to start applying the highlights of it so i'm going to check something if this is really bright out okay that's really okay so it is advisable most times when you want to apply your highlights after applying the shadows you create a new layer but most times i prefer doing mine on a particular layer but since if you are a beginner watching this video and you might get confused or you are still making mistakes most of the time so you just have to split these layers into two you have to create a new layer and start doing this but if you've gone so far that yeah you can control the mistakes or if you make a mistake you can fix the mistakes halfway then you can just stick to making the making use of the layer so but if you find out that you know just create a new layer and set out to clipping marks right clicking and create a clipping marks and you continue but i'm going to delete that layer and maintain this one layer now i'm going to grab these light colors color right here now and then i'm going to start applying but this time around i'm going to make use of the soft ground brush because i want everything to blend in to blend in a little bit before i start blending in my stuff so i'm just going to start over now i'm making use of um, the pressure sensitivity right now because there are some places which are light as you can see over here there are some places that are more lighter than other places so i have to make use of the pressure to fix all those stuff but if you're making use of mouse you can just apply everything on the same quantity or whatever i'm going to call it um maybe quantity i'm just going to put it that way you can apply it on the same quantity then later on then you can start adding more of it to make it more lighter and more darker or whatever it is so now i'm just going to start putting out the colors the highlights and you guys should know that this is not really the full approach i take whenever i when i just have to simplify this to make it more simple for you guys to tag along because there are some other crazy ways i just quickly apply my shadows and just to make me arrive on exactly what i want so now just look on your image and start applying the lights on the places where you know they should be so like mine these are the places they are supposed to be so we have so now as you can see here this is this part is totally different from the highlights and the colors you are making yourself so you just have to give some space a little bit here with the lights you are applying Now you should when you are applying the shadows, you should make sure to preserve the cheekbones because those are the fun that's the fun part of applying those shadows. And don't be scared to switch between colors when applying those shadows. Like here, I'm trying to like miss some part of the cheekbones. So I'm just going to bring that back with the colors right here. So you can just keep doing this to really get exactly what you are looking for okay so really going to
so let's zoom out a little bit and let's see so now we've not really gone too deep on this we've not even start blending but you can see that here yeah, we start having we start building out the face structure exactly how we really really want it to be so now you can see right everything is coming out exactly the way we want it to be so i'm just going to quickly apply all these stuff and i'm going to get back before i start blending So um, I'm done applying the highlight. So it's time for me to do a. I, I to me I call it a pre-blending. That is mixing the colors together before I start doing the full blending. When I mix the color, you might have seen that in most of my video. That you know, I most of you know, I always make use of the mixer brush in my blending. But before I proceed to that full blending, I always mix it up with the mix the colors together so that i get a little bit of a smooth blending before i grab the mixer brush and i start doing that so that is exactly what i'm really going to do now so when i check now everything i think everything is really okay for me but you can when you look at the image you can see that we have some kind of a little bit of blush and so i'm, I'm just going to keep that for now now that we have all these stuff and we're blocking the shadows and the highlights the way we really really want it to be now don't look at everything that is not really making any sense because the nose is really bad not the way it is right there because we are going to fix everything so now that we've applied these shadows and so on so at this point what i'm going to do we are going to create a new layer now because we have the highlights the flat color and now we are going to put the face blending on a separate layer which is exactly what we really really want to do right now so at this point now, since we have this layer, you are still going to set that to clipping mask. And this time I'm going to make use of <coughs> the shortcut, which is command or G and set that to clipping mask. So right now I have my brushes, but I'm like I said before, I'm not done creating all this brush. So I will switch over to the general brush and I'm going to make use of the soft round brush for this so i'm going to grab the soft round brush and i will head over to my opacity and my flow i'm going to set the opacity to around 30 percent and i'm going to set the flow to around 50 percent because i want to pick from each and over all these colors to uh, give a little bit of a blending before i go over to the main blending with the mixer brush so to do that now you just have to uh, hold down the odd key and sample from one place or the other like this and you paint to fill it out then you can sample from different places now as you can see you can see how it's blending in right so we can quickly check between the before and the after you can do this with mouse it's very very simple very very simple for you guys to follow like I've been making use of this technique for so long, but I just decide to switch over to the mixer brush because it's a little bit faster than what I've but than making use of this method. And um, I'm going to say painting and kind of like talking is not really good, but I just have to try because. I really need you guys to grab so much from my channel that is exactly what i'm doing and that is why i really create a channel because i struggle a lot to learn all this stuff that is most of you guys are the self-taught artists you know how it's really really going to be learning like i found i have a lot of issue trying to learn all these stuff on my own so i just really have to help you guys to get better with what you are doing and by breaking it down and not allowing you guys to go through those process i go through all right so now you really get to see so this is what we have before and this is what we have after we well, did the blending and it, we are really getting exactly what we have right yeah and one thing that you guys are really going to know don't try to be accurate don't try to paint the shadow the way it is because if you try to do that you are really really going to get things messed up for yourself just Try to make sure you follow the shape of 
the head the shape is really the main part of it just follow the shape of the head and when you follow the shape of the head you are really really going to get exactly what you want so right like all the places we couldn't apply the highlights like right here you can see then you can start grabbing from those light places and you can start applying them which they can blend in at the same time so always have that in mind it's it's very 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 important so what i'm doing right now i'm trying to like take away the full highlights by covering it with mixing it up with the lights and shadows so that it's not really really going to be bright because if it's bright when you apply the shadows when you apply the final highlights when you apply the final highlight it's really really going to be too bright for your image which would be for your artwork which which won't really make any sense like for so long i find myself going back to adjust some of my artwork because of that so i try to fix that when i really understand how that will really work so you guys have to fix that on yours and try to understand that before I really don't want this video to get up to one hour, but I really have no choice. So let's just quickly see. I'm going to speed through this and going to talk back when um, done. And I get a little bit of. Now, like I said before, I speed up this. Like I said, there are some places we couldn't apply. You can see this, right? We don't apply, so we have to do some cheats to get all these stuffs. Like you know, here is a combination of the light and the dark. So we are going to grab some from this part and we are going to paint it over here like this. So now you can see everything it's now giving us exactly what we want. So I'm just going to repeat all this same process around. Then when I'm done, I'm going to get back to you guys. So now that I'm done with the <coughs> first blending or what I'm going to say, maybe the pre-blending according to what I say, so it's time for us now to make use of the mixer brush to smoothen out the whole transition because if we decide to make use of the brush too it's really going to take us more time than making use of the mixer brush so what i'm going to do i'm going to create another layer above because i don't want to do anything destructive so that layer there i'm going to set that to clipping mask i'm going to right click and create clipping mask or you can make use of a shortcut which i just tell you about so now you go down to your brush to you right click or you click and hold down the left click on your mouse or your pen tablet then select the mixer brush 
and when you select the mixer brush and i'm going to give you some settings but i'm not going to go in depth of all these settings i'm going to leave a link to the video where i show you guys how to make use of the mixer brush so right now first of all this i'm just going to set this you're going to set it to clean brush and um this you are going to uncheck these two icon right here because you really don't need them so the weight i'm going to set it to 20 the load to 20 the flow the mix to 10 and the flow to 20 and every other settings remains the same so i'm going to hit on enter now i'm going to select the default soft run brush in photoshop now what i'm going to do I'll come up here and select the sample all layer because if you set it to if you uncheck the sample all layer no matter how you blend it's going to sample on only one layer and it's not really going to make any sense because we have so many colors which we really want to sample from so when you check the sample all layers it's going to sample from every layer below the selected layer as you can see if i start you can see what's going on right here but okay so something is still really really going on so let's come out to this part and let's set this to clean brush we don't need that brush and oh my god i'm coming something is something is really really going on right here. so i'm going to delete this layer and i'm going to check this okay so that's why i make a little bit of mistakes so i'm going to check that so now <clears throat> with the sample all layer checked you can see that now we can smoothing every layers or blend every color so i'm going to undo this right now then with the sample all layer unchecked when we try to you can see that nothing is really really happening so that's just the basic setting i use but when you watch that video you can get more details on how you can do that so i'm going to set that to clipping mask control command or g and sample all layers checked remember that so what i'm going to do now i will just go a little bit not much not don't go really hard on this just a little bit to blend in everything and i will try to use this to build up some of the hard part on all this part like the edges and so on so i'll just go little by little and start blending those so and as you keep going you can always check between the before and the after because you can do that right in photoshop because you put it on a separate layer so here is the before and <coughs> here is the after you can see what we've done so let's just keep going And um, you really need to turn off the line art layer because you just see what happens, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this layer because that I really don't want that to happen. So I'm going to create a new layer. <coughs> so that's a clipping mask and we are going to start all over again. And don't mind, this is pretty nasty. So if you've seen most of my videos where I hide the line art and make use of just the mixer brush alone then this is the reason why i'm doing that and lastly you have to hide the background layer too so that you're going to have a transparent background because you don't want it to peak from the background and add to <clears throat> to the color because it doesn't really make any sense at that point so we're going to do this
As you keep going, you can also review the <coughs> the line art to see your progress between the before and the after what you are doing. So this is this is where we've gone so far. I'm gonna continue and check back when I'm done. So after doing after, after using the mixer brush for some time, you can zoom out to really see what you done. So um, <clears throat> at this point, I'm going to get rid of this background. But before I do that, I'm going to create a solid color layer, and I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. I'm going to put in 80, 80, 80. That's 50% gray. I'm going to hit on OK, and I can feel free to delete that because. It's no longer useful to me. Okay, so <clears throat> with the 50% gray as the background, I will be able to see how bright some areas can be and how dark some areas can be. Because with the white, the white is going to have some kind of a competition with the dark, with the light background of my, with the light parts of my artwork. So with the dark gray it's really really going to be different for me to really see and know where i'm going to touch so that i can get exactly what i really want now you can see i'm not really going exactly for that kind of nose right now so but i'm going to fix that and that is exactly really what i'm doing right now as you can see trying to create that little line between the nose that gives us two highlights so i'm just creating that right now so um still hide this layer because it's very very necessary so now you can check within the overall before so this is what we're having before and this is what we are having after you can see how everything is bl blending smoothly and giving us a nice transition but you still really have to build more on all this stuff Okay, so like <clears throat> me, what I usually do is uh, when I put in some shadows and highlights and yes, I've gotten a little bit of the face, some of the depth of the face. What I always do, I always group everything, I always put everything into one group and I always name that skin so that I know yes, this is the skin. Then what I do, I start blocking the eyes and the mouth to give it to give it a almost like a um since i've got to at, at this stage i always call this stage something like um the 50 percent rendered part of my artwork then when i after getting out of this stage then i decided to, i always go ahead and out of the eyes and the mouth so that i will really concentrate or see what i have done so far because 
if I finish working on the shadows and highlights without the eyes and so on, I wouldn't really feel complete at this point. So right now I am going to um, fill in the eyes and the, the mouth on a separate layer each. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick from this part of from her own eyes because I just want to keep everything almost the same. Okay, so now that I've blocked out the eyes and other part of the mouth, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start darkening the shadows that I have. So I'm going to do that on a separate layer, right? And um, this video is almost one hour long oh my god i've been sitting for one hour painting right here well that is just really what i do so i'm not going to talk much on that so right now i will go back into i'm just going to group this layer the g and i'm going to name this mouth okay so let's go back into the skin let's create another layer so what I'm going to do now is um, since these are the colors I'm really going to be making use of so I'm going to go back to the dark darker color and then I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply because you can do this in two ways you can set the blend mode to multiply or you can pick a darker color from the color palette like when you're selected you can just slide down a little bit like this to give you a little bit reddish and so on but i'm going to use the multiply method then let me try out this brush because i don't really see what it's really going to do and boom this is kind of like creating something nice for me a nice texture with this is exactly what i was looking for okay so now i'm going to grab the soft run brush inverted and i'm going to increase the style so much to something that's really going to be cool so right now i'm just going to do the same thing so this time around i'm going to hold an option so this is the third method i'm showing you which you can use for creating flip remarks i'm going to hold down the option and alt key on windows i'm going to hold down the option and put my mouse cursor at the middle here and just click so that it's going to create a clipping mask now it's time for me to start building the shadows more and more so the places that is needed that is where i'm really going to build more 
on and you should know that the brush i'm using it's making use of the pressure of park city and so on that's just how i set it to be so that is just what i'm going to use to build up these shadows and you can see that it's a little bit kind of like rough because i added texture to the brush i really don't want my painting to be that smooth so i want to give it a little bit of dimension and a little bit of difference from the way i usually paint so i just have to add up a little bit of texture to that so, okay so So now this is where most of you usually have issues like <clears throat> as i keep going now i'm seeing some the highlights are really really light than the the shadows and it's not really really exactly what i wanted right so what i'm going to do on this layer i'm just going to increase the size of the brush something that's really going to cover up everywhere just like that so now i can reduce or since i make use of the i'm making use of a pressure sensitivity what i'm going to do i'm just going to dab once and every place as well because of the pressure it's not applying much so i'm just going to go randomly on every place so now you can see what i'm doing is that i'm trying to darken darken almost everywhere to balance the light and the shadows so that when i apply the main light it's really going to stand out okay so now this is exactly what i've done which is really looking so nice so overall let's see this is the before and this is the after what we've done so now we're bringing in more detail we're bringing in more details on the faces on the face of these i'm uh, really sorry for the background noise most times i really hate recording now Home. so that's what we're really gonna go through all this process while we are indoors so I'm just going to do all this stuff okay so now this is a little bit balanced to what I really really wanted so now what I'm going to do is this I'm still touching around a bit a bit like this part needs more all right so this is a little bit nice now so what i'm going to do i'm going to create 
another layer above this layer and I'm going to set out as a clipping mask then I'm going to grab the oh my oh 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 my 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 but I'm sorry about that so I'm gonna open this back all right so now I'm going to select the mixer brush again with the same settings but this time I'm going to select one of my brush because I want to retain this texture you can see the texture that I got right here it's really really awesome so I want to retain the texture and I love that so much so let me quickly check on something and to all right so that's that just find the way so now everything checks sample all layers gonna turn off the line add and turn off the background as well turn off the eye and so on so alright so let's create a new layer again set it as a clipping mask and let's paint alright so this is really really giving me what I want like what I want now So what I'm doing, I'm trying to uh, blend the colors I just added now. So I'm trying to blend that with the light so that everything is really, really going to be balanced. And if I check this later on and I see that the texture is not really making any sense on this then I'm gonna change my brush but I just really like what I'm seeing right now so I guess I can stick to the brush and now you can see that I have a whole lot of control over this mixing settings because of the pressure that's on my brush so So, so far so good this is what we have gotten so this is a last blend I'm working on right now and this is the multiply layer which I applied so this is what we are having right now so I'm just going to round this up and I'll get back to you guys when I'm done
truck out.
It's always a good time for Slough Polka. Опа! 